There's no way you should be in the National Basketball Association making millions of dollars, can't shoot a free throw, or can't shoot a jump shot. I'm sorry, no respect there. He showed me what I said a few days ago that I've always believed about Kevin Durant since he's been in the league. He's unguardable. I, look, I think there's still a chance he ends up with the Lakers, but I would say Griffin's place there makes it less likely. Chris Broussard here, and welcome to the brand new Hoops on Fox podcast. This podcast will give you your daily dose of all things NBA from Fox Sports, including the best content from Skip and Shannon, Nick Wright, plus special guests, fresh NBA content from myself, post-game interviews from NBA stars around the league, and much, much more. Up first, Chris Broussard joins Skip and Shannon to dissect Kevin Durant's big game two performance. He showed me what I said a few days ago that I've always believed about Kevin Durant since he's been in the league. He's unguardable. And as much credit as Patrick Beverly deserves for the first two games, and he was great, the fact is Durant was limiting himself mm -hmm. by only taking eight shots. If you go and, – and here's the thing with Durant. If you go back to the last two months of the season, all of March and April, for some reason he wasn't shooting as much. He went from 19 shots a game to 14 shots a game. And I don't know why. Nobody else's shot stopped. His did. Last, he gave an eloquent reason for his struggles sure. in the first two games. It was, it was basketball savvy. It was, it was great insight. It was right about the refs letting Beverly get into it more. But the key phrase to what he said was, I'm Kevin Durant. <laughs> Y'all know who I am. Mm -hmm. And yes, and, and that's my point. You are Kevin Durant. We can't have you being a role player. We can't have you taking 12 shots, eight shots. We need you to go out there and be the star. Mm -hmm. And so that's what Steve Kerr was trying to get to him. And last night, that's what he did. And what I liked about it most was the way he did it was he didn't do it with over dribbling. He didn't do it with too much ISO. Mm -mm. If you look at last year against Houston in that, in that series, there were, they baited him with their switching defense into going one-on-one -on -one a lot and ISO, and it got Golden State out of its offense, and they almost lost the series in, in large part because of that. Yesterday, it was post-ups. It was one or two dribble pull-ups. Mm -hmm. It was catch and shoot. And when he does that, I mean, it didn't take away from anybody else. Hmm. Like, he was fantastic, and you just need Kevin Durant to be Kevin Durant. Like, I, like he said, he's Kevin Durant. Then be that. Don't be a role player. Mm -hmm. Be a star. Mm -hmm. Well, Kevin Durant didn't show me anything that I didn't already know. Right. He's unguardable. Um, he's, a unique, he's a unique talent because we've never seen a guy that's this tall, this skilled, that can do what he can do. Most seven-footers, when we were coming up, they played with their back to the basket. They couldn't step out to the three-point line. Dirk did, brought that in as a seven-footer. Right. But Dirk can't put the ball on the floor like this guy can. He can put the ball on the floor and go to the hole. He's unguardable. So he didn't show me anything, Skip. He can score on anybody. I like that he let the game come to him. He was aggressive, but nothing was forced. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a difference between I'm being aggressive and you forcing up bad shots. Yeah, he had a couple of heat checks because he was feeling good. He wanted to see how far his range could be pushed out. But Kevin Durant let the game come to him. And so even when they posted him, Skip, they didn't post him down on the block. They posted him at the top of the key. Right. Mm -hmm. So now, and, and the Clippers are like, bruh, if you want to be a facilitator, go ahead. Because that's not you. Mm. LeBron exactly. can impact the game by passing the ball. You impact the game by scoring the ball. So we'll take that. We'll let you eight. We'll let you take these little eight, nine shots a game. And you want to have 20, 10, 12 assists, mm -hmm. have at it. Mm. But the way Kevin Durant guts you is by the mid-range, putting it on the floor. And if you watched him in transition last night, Skip, he, w he went to the rim a couple of times, but he pulled up from 15. He followed up, put back, and won. Mm. Kevin Durant plays like, look, he plays like this? Oh, yeah, well, it's gonna, I might have to concede mm. <clears throat> that he's the best player. Mm. But, mm. but, as Chris said, last two months, he's taken 14 shots per game as opposed to 19. Mm. And we did see the first two games. Mm. So until we see more of this, because we know what he represents, he is Kevin Durant, mm. the most skilled player that we've seen, yep. especially at putting the ball in the hole. Seven foot tall, a 10 foot apex on his jump shot, mm. got all that. Mm. So he didn't show you anything that you didn't already know, Skip, mm. to stop. By the way, quick point of order. I do remember him on one fast break 
I think it was game three two years ago. In the oh, finals, and he goodness. pulled up to the three-point line. <laughs> Guess who was guarding him? That guy, that, the ex-king. He the, was, the, the, what, yep. what did LeBron Remember tell that? you? On film, what he likes to do is the hezzy. Mm. He liked and didn't go by you. Mm. But he saw LeBron sinking, anticipating that. He pulled up. Skip, I gave him credit. What you want me to We're not talking about that, that shot game. said, I'm the best player on the planet because that was the King's house. That was the first time they broke through with Kevin Durant to win yes. and his first finals MVP out of two straight. So Chris Broussard and I have closely observed Kevin Durant for a long time, and I have found him often baffling and perplexing and confounding <laughs> because I've never quite figured him out because he's never quite figured himself out. He still suffers an identity crisis of who am I? I came to Golden State to play beautiful basketball, share the basketball, unselfish basketball. And then to your point, he, he, after a while, he wants to be a cog in the system. No, no, no. You're the system. You, you are the guy. Draymond Green was crying in the parking lot, calling you on his cell phone after losing game seven yeah. because they realized that group couldn't do it without one more Face time. nuclear weapon. He FaceTimed, he FaceTimed him. him, okay? We right. need you. I'm crying. I'm crying. <laughs> Let me see what Brian did. He dropped a triple double on okay. us. <laughs> so, I have told you for two years, Kevin Durant is now the best player on the planet. But I have conceded an asterisk to that, which is when he decides to be. Because he doesn't always decide to be. Right. But last night, he decided to be. It was a little bit of an indictment for Kevin Durant that he needed the media to push his button because the media pushed his button last night. He, right. he reads everything. He's the thinnest skin superstar ever. <laughs> and it doesn't seem to really thwart him in any way. He, not he, on the court. Not, that's what I mean. He rises above it on the court. But he reads and absorbs and takes to heart every little speck of criticism. And this got him. And, and he's saying, you know, I, the me, people that analyze basketball wanted me to engage with Patrick. No, we wanted you to engage with the game. Right. How about just engage, right? Yeah, we just want you to Kevin. bust Patrick Beverly up. Yeah. Right. You should. Or what you do? But bust them all up. And then I loved his quote. You, you're reading about the I'm Kevin Durant quote. Yeah. But he said, I'm not going to get in the way of the game because I want to have a little back and forth with Patrick Beverly. No, no, Kevin. You are the game. You can't get in the way because you're, you're it. Right. You, they're going to go as far as he takes them. Right. In the end, I, Steph's tremendous. He's all-time greatest shooter. Clay can be and streaks the all-time yeah. greatest yes. shooter. And Draymond is Draymond. He can be the guts and the glue. But, but we know when push comes to shove, it's 35 or bust. Right. And so last night, they're in a little bit of trouble against the Clippers. They know the Clippers, are, as he said, we know they're going to come out with a lot of energy, sure. which they did. And what did he do to their energy? He just shot it to that pieces. It. He, he makes their, his first five shots and his first two free throws. He's got 12 points at the quarter, and the game's over. Yeah. It's 41 to 24 ball game, yeah. right? A guy like that can score the basketball. You don't want James Harden to go five for five. You don't want Steph no. and, and these guys like KD to go. For, it's over. Once they see the ball go in the basket like that, mm -hmm. you got no chance of stopping them. Okay, so Kevin, he's had these shoot. Campaigns. Am I nice, Kevin, or am I not nice? Who am I? I don't know who I am. Am I a tough guy or am I a really good guy? I don't know who I am because some days he's that guy and some days he's that guy. Am I from the mean streets of Seat Pleasant, Maryland? Or, or am I an entrepreneur in Silicon Valley? I'm, I'm all of the above, right? And, and he'll wake up on a daily basis like, today... I feel like I'm that guy. But right? most days, yeah. what is he? Confrontational with the media. That's what he is on most days. I, I've said to Kevin, because he'll text you when he doesn't like something you really? you say. Oh yeah, yeah. He'll, he, he'll text you. He'll let you yeah. know. He will. And I've said to him, when the guy I saw in Oklahoma City is different. Like now, since you've been in Golden State, cursing yeah. more, yeah. calling out the refs more, going. At, and he told me he said, "This is the real Kevin Durant." The guy in OKC, I was just being trying to, you know, say what I needed to say for the media. Yeah, Oklahoma, because they don't like the guy. They don't curse out there. You know, kind of, you know, they Bible. I don't know whether you buy it or not. It's bible Whether you buy it or not, that's what he told. He said, this is the real KD. Okay. And I don't know, like I said, it wasn't just the first two games. This has gone on the last two months. I don't know. Remember, he even said it in his little spiel the other day. Yep. For the last two months, we've been playing this way. Well, he's been playing that way. Right. Steph's shots haven't gone down. Clay's haven't gone down. I don't know if KD was trying to get Boogie more involved. His Maybe. shots went a little up. Yeah. And this is why I do think that 
I think they'll be fine, maybe better without Boogie. No, no offense to him because he is no, a I mean, really good individual player. I, I, I but you can have you. too much, right? Like yep. he good, giving it to Boogie takes away from KD and Steph and Clay. So now I think it'll be you know more fluid with the three of them sharing mm-hmm. the ball, and they should be able to roll. Well, I don't care if he go into the back. He could have went to a back and forth because he could have got up twenty shots and go into a, get into a back and forth like Ben Simmons got into it with Jared Dudley yesterday, Skip. Mm. Mm. He wasn't, you know, he, hey, I'm just going to do what I do. Right. And then at the end of the day, we're going to count it up and see who got the most points. Okay. We'll talk about it. Bottom line, Steve Kerr two days ago said, Kevin Durant can get any shot he wants at any time. Yeah. Period. He ain't the only floor. one that can do that. Okay. James Harden can get any shot he wanted at any time. LeBron James can get any shot he wanted at any time. Steve Curry ain't breaking no news, Skip Bayless. You act like he want to interrupt our normally scheduled program to break this news. He's, Kevin Durant can get any shot he wants. He's talking about eight-foot jump shots that are unstoppable. Three-point shots are, unst- are stoppable, especially when LeBron or LeBrick shoots the, the, There you go. Well, well, what, let, us, let us get this growing healthy. Yeah. Yeah. We see it a specialist right now. Are you still trying to get Yeah, healthy? we getting that growing healthy. We got something for yeah, you. Really? Got something for you next year, buddy. Is he going to that physical therapist in Beverly Hills? Nah, nah, we ain't going to see her. Done. We ain't no going more, to see her. No more social <laughs> media posts. She's though. off the team now. She's, <laughs> no, she posts a photo we, in. We, we're not going to see her. Again. <laughs> next, Jason McIntyre and Chris Broussard do a knockdown J talking about the Lakers, potential Rockets Warriors matchup, and whether or not the Bucks will run the East. Welcome back to Knockdown J. I'm here with my man, Chris Broussard, licking his wounds after last week's beatdown. Courtesy of your boy, Bouchard, how you feeling? You feeling confident today? I'm feeling great. <laughs> you the one got the beat down. What are you all talking right. about? All right, all right. We Let's need to start to all point. over with the truth. How about that? <laughs> Let's get started. Chris, uh, the Los Angeles Lakers, not in the playoffs, but still one of the most fascinating no teams in the league. Chris, I don't know. Uh, Ty Lu, Monty Williams, I'm just going to ask you, is this Lakers head coaching job even a good job right now? Well, it's always a good job to coach LeBron James. And I know that comes with a lot of headaches. It stressed Ty Lu out. He had to go to the hospital because of it, right? <laughs> Take some time off. So I'm not saying it's not stressful, but Shaq brought problems, right? Coaching Shaq. How about Kobe? There were problems. Michael Jordan gave problems to Phil Jackson, didn't want to run the triangle. They're always superstars bring issues. They bring different challenges than a bunch of role players who just want to do whatever the coach says. LeBron's not unique in that regard. And on top of that, with all the challenges you get, you also get the great benefit of having a chance to win a championship. Any coach, any coach who doesn't want the challenge of coaching a great player like LeBron James, I don't want you because you're not built for this, number one. Number two, what makes the Lakers' job right now not a good one is that is the front office That's situation. Good. Not LeBron. The front office situation. Who's the president? Yeah. Who's running basketball operations? What did we say about Luke all year? Magic and Palinka didn't hire him. Right. Rob Palinka, I'm talking about, they didn't hire him. So if, if things go south, Luke's going to pay the price. Well, if I'm a coach and the Lakers hire me and then three weeks later bring in a new president who I'm not connected to, I'm not tied to, now I could be the scapegoat again. They, the Lakers are doing this backwards, and that says a lot about their organization. Go out, solidify your front office, hire a president, or if it's going to be Rob Palinka, announce Rob Palinka as president and hire a GM under him, then go hire your coach. And the challenge of coaching LeBron, it disappears if you have a strong front office because if LeBron, say, has an issue with the coach, the front office didn't say, look, he's your coach. You're here for the next three years. So is he. If you're going to win, it's with this guy. That's what Pat Riley did with Eric Spolstra. It resulted in two titles. So you just have to – the Lakers don't have strong leadership right now. It's not LeBron James that's the problem. It's Jeannie Buss and the yeah. way they're running things well, right Jeannie now. Jeannie Buss is a major problem. I think we would agree. Uh, I don't know if she's in over her head or what uh, running the show, but they do need a president because if I'm looking at taking the Lakers' job, What's the game plan this summer? Are we trading all the young guys? Who's on the table? Who's on the market? What are we doing as our free agent pitch? Well, you are right now, going, right, right. The Clippers across town have a much better pitch than the Lakers. You guys sell glitz and glamour and Hollywood and the beaches and LeBron. We're going to sell grit 
and hardcore tenacity. Look at that comeback well, we just made against the Warriors. Better front office. Better front office. D guys who were kind of undervalued. Better the coach. Lakers had Lou Williams, Chris. Right. And they let him go. And Lou Williams now going to be the sixth man of the year again. I don't know this is a great job right now. There's just too much uncertainty. And don't forget, you just say coaching LeBron's great. The Rich Paul angle. This is a challenge. Is Rich Paul going to want to shove more of his guys in into the Lakers and say, hey, we need to take this guy on? But that's Le LeBron my point. And just, it, LeBron's 34 and a half. That's okay? my point. A strong front office won't let an agent, Rich Paul or otherwise, come in and run their team. Unless there was some handshake, wink, nod deal when LeBron came here. Hey, me and Rich. Well, that uh, would be gone. With magic. Who brought him here? Yep. That He's guy's gone. gone. Yeah. So this is a chance. So you're going to be the guy to stand up to LeBron and Rich Paul? This Arguably is a the most well, powerful you, agent and you, the most powerful player in the league? Why are you running a basketball team if you can't stand up to a player mm -hmm. and an agent? I'm not saying be adversarial. I want the input of LeBron. I want the good relationship with Rich Paul, no question. But I'm not going to let you run my organization. I want to hear LeBron out. What are you looking for in a coach? Who do you like out there? What do you think about, you know, some of our offseason moves could be? I'm taking it all in, but I'm making the final decision, and it might disagree with what you're saying. That's what David Griffin did. Well, that's a perfect pivot to the next question, Chris. David Griffin named GM of the Pelicans. New Orleans, of course, has Anthony Davis, who has said he's played his last game. He said his goodbyes. He wore his uh, Looney Tunes T-shirt. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, so your, do your you question think is, David Griffin right. in New Orleans means that Anthony Davis is more or less likely to land with the Lakers? Oh, I look, I think there's still a chance he ends up with the Lakers, but I would say Griffin's place there makes it less likely. Interesting. Not that he's not going to end up there. So Griffin, LeBron, who worked together in Cleveland. Now Griffin's going to say, eh, no, you're not getting AD. Cause Is he working I, for LeBron now? Well, hold on, hold on. I mean, Time seriously, out. like he, his job, David Griffin's job is to improve the New Orleans Pelicans. True. He couldn't care less about improving yeah. the Los I'm Angeles sure Lakers. I'm sure he's heavily invested in the Pelicans for the next decade, right? We know these GMs. Come on, they a couple year job. He's on to the next one. Wait, Chris, wait, wait, wait. I'm a David Griffin could have held out, could have held off on accepting the Pelicans job maybe he if knows, he was really interested in the Lakers maybe he job. Genie's bus already got somebody in there. He didn't right? even talk with them, to my knowledge, and, and it hasn't been reported. So I'm just saying, Griffin, he's got a great relationship with LeBron and Rich Paul. Yes, but. He's working for the he Pelicans. Is. He, is. he has no interest in making anybody else better. Yeah, of course, he could be a double agent. I'm kidding. That's a joke. I but mean, he, here's the thing. Though. I don't think the you're Lakers, joking. No, no. We've talked about this in depth, Broussard. The Lakers' best shot at a star, you said it last week. I agree. Anthony, Anthony Davis. Davis. Right. There ain't no fallback if David Griffin stiffs LeBron and Rich Paul and says, we're not, we're sending Anthony Davis elsewhere. If it's a better deal for the well, Pelicans, now we're going I'm not trying. Trust me, I know David Griffin. I've known David Griffin since he was working in the public relations department for the Phoenix Suns. He's a tough customer. He's not going to just hand. Of course not. Nobody's saying that. He's not, if it's a tie, he's sending Anthony Davis somewhere else. Well, okay, if but, it's a better deal for the Pelicans, he's definitely sending Anthony Davis somewhere else. But then we get else. to the point of this other deal, this deal that doesn't exist. Is Anthony Davis signing in that other place long term? Because he has said he wants to be in the with the Lakers. Has he? he publicly, has he said? Well, that. he hasn't said that publicly. And but they haven't said they in. didn't even say that to the Pelicans. He's that he definitely wants Lakers. Okay, Anthony Davis wants he, to be Lakers in are Phoenix number right one on his list, but it's not Lakers or bust for Anthony, Anthony Davis. Davis. Behind the scenes, the chatter is he's going to be in Space Jam too. I, I'm assuming that's out there or something. He's going to want to be with the Lakers. He ain't going to sign in like 28 other teams. Maybe Boston. Well, Maybe the he's, Knicks. He's, that's, he's, there's been talk that he doesn't want to go to Boston. Okay, he doesn't want to go to Boston. The, so Knicks, we're the Knicks, if the Knicks get the first or second pick. Maybe. They can know, make maybe. an offer to uh, New Orleans that might trump what the mm -hmm. Lakers get. Okay. Look, and so I'm, we're I'm, Lakers I'm, or not saying, I'm not saying it's impossible for the Lakers to get him. Because if Kyrie Irving leaves Boston... I, if I'm Danny Ainge, I'm not giving up Jason Tatum. Nobody. Now, I don't know if Danny will shoot no. those craps, but I'm not doing that for a guy that could be a one-year right. rental. So it keeps but, coming back to the Lakers. Well, but we, we, don't, we, don't, we have to see the landscape from Boston sure. yet. Even without Jason Tatum, a Jalen Brown, maybe a Gordon Hayward, a, a Marcus Smart or, or, you know, a Terry Rozier, draft picks. Like, David Griffin has to look at what's going to make my franchise better, what deal. And for the Lakers, is Brandon Ingram, 
I don't want to say damaged goods. I think, you know, when blood clots in the arm aren't as dangerous right. as no, those no. in the legs, but that does make it a little bit questionable. Right, let me come back to this. When and now Kyle Kuzma. Kyle Kuzma's not a franchise player. No, of course not. Lonzo but, Ball hasn't shown us anything to believe he's a franchise can player. Can I get so a 20 what, second what all do the Lakers Bruce, have? I want to come back to February when the Pelicans reportedly would not pick up the phone to talk uh -huh. to the Lakers, okay? And then when they did allegedly pick up the phone, they said, we want everybody and four first round picks. Griffin's not going to be that standoffish the way no, these other guys would. Right. So I, that's why I believe David Griffin in New Orleans helps the Lakers in their quest for Anthony Davis. Whoever was running New Orleans, if it was back to Dell Dimps and those oh, guys, gosh. but seriously, where is Dell if, Dimps right during now? the summer, we're working at Dunkin' Donuts during the new the off season, if it was the same the front office, they would begin talking with the Lakers in the oh. summer. The issue was. We're not trading him there before the deadline. There was no reason to trade him in February. That's what it was. It wasn't just being upset with the Lakers. Yeah, that was a part of yeah. it. But come off season, they would have been willing to engage the Lakers along with the Knicks, the Celtics, and any other teams that may want to get in well, this. Let's just what if Chicago oh, wants to throw? What if Chicago he got a lot of young, uh, young Anthony pieces? Davis did yeah, it's Chicago. a big city. It's a big market. Obviously, a great history. So I'm just saying there are other things. I'm not saying it's impossible for the Lakers. I'm saying David Griffin is not going to give Anthony, give the Lakers any type of break. It may I have to be a that, three yeah. or four team deal. And right now, who in that Lakers front office is capable of putting together a three or four team deal? Rich Paul, when, the guy who knows. David well, Rich Griffin. maybe would have to go out and try to help orchestrate it. Yeah. You know, if to be honest, because okay. agents do do that sort of thing. Are you ready to move on to the best player in the NBA? We're going to talk about well, Kevin Durant. Oh, oh. Yes, we are going to talk about Kevin He's Durant. He's in the running. It's up for grabs. I'm saying grab it. I don't think that's the topic here, but uh, you want to fire off this question well, or me look, here? I mean, listen. I, what is going on? Kevin Durant has averaged 12 shots a game in this, these first two games with the Clippers. Furthermore, Kevin Durant, over the last month and a half of the season, okay, March and April, 17 games total. He averaged 13 shots. He went from shooting 19 shots a game or close to 19 to shooting 14 shots a game or close to 14. It was 13.8 or something like that. So he dropped five shots a game. His scoring went down to 20 points a game yeah. from like 27. What is going on with KD? Yeah. So I will, I'll be at the game tonight. I hope you will be I'm at I'm going Staples. Sunday, not tonight. Uh, Easter Sunday, huh? Yeah. Okay. So my theory here, Chris – is that Kevin Durant is testing the Golden State Warriors. He is saying to them, all I hear is I'm going to New York and the Warriors don't need me. The Splash Brothers will go back to the way it was when they won 73 games. And I believe Kevin is he Durant... Is really hearing that? Or is that just how he I mean, feels? We know Kevin Durant has rabbit ears. Uh, maybe but but how, how, how many have you heard? Is that out there? I don't know that that's out there. I'm floating my I theory. do know this. KD does feel that. He does feel like... The, the Warriors feel like we made you. You need us. Right. You know, not made him. He was, fans, obviously, he was the, obviously a great player, but, the, you know, we made you a champion. Fans on social media feed that. The media, I think, kind of feeds that a little bit. And well, I, all, that's always going to be there. Yeah, and if that, you look, as I don't you care know, how many rings his you win with pre the Warriors. and post All-Star splits are dramatic. I mean, he just stopped shooting the basketball. Right. He had eight shots and nine turnovers in game two. And I think he's testing the Warriors, and I think he's saying – Guys, I want you to come to me the way you came to me in the Hamptons and said, we need you. We need you, KD. You flew across the country to recruit me, and now here I am in your backyard, and you're not showing me the love. And I think the Warriors need to come to Kevin Durant and say, we need you, Kevin. It's on us. We came out of our element. We moved out of our comfort zone, and we messed it up. We need you back. And I think Kevin Durant, this is why I give a chance that he signs a one plus one, Chris. We need you back. Like need they, you back. They've been telling him all year, we need you. But are they showing him? Are they showing him? What do you want him to do? Run plays for Kevin Durant. Get him on the block against Patrick Beverly. The head Get coach, him the ball. Uh, the head coach just said, I want Kevin Durant taking 20 or 30 shots. That's not, that's not, what, what? Get him the ball. What, does he have to say, I want you taking 50? Maybe he wants, maybe <laughs> he's he needs getting to show Kevin Durant the, the ball. Chris, you know. I, I want to hear what Kevin Durant needs yeah. to hear. Chris, you know, you go home and maybe you take your wife a nice bouquet of flowers. You put them on the table. Here you go, honey. And then you go on and do your work and you watch your NBA. And you do all the right things and say all the right things, but you're not showing the love. 
I think, and again, this is just speculation, Kevin Durant is not first feeling the second. love from the Warriors. He, I think he wants to be embraced. People act like it's over. You got uh, guys at this network, ESPN, all saying, he's gone, it's done, it's the Knicks, it's done. Maybe Kevin Durant likes it and has fun. How much fun does he have right now? I don't think he's having fun. He does not look joyous out there. He hasn't and those looked quotes, joyous, though, for a few years, to be honest. I mean, I think he was joyous collecting those MVPs in the finals. Yeah, he but he also daggers said over LeBron he, he and also, LeBron's grill. He also is quoted as saying, I won the championship, and it was like, uh, okay. Yeah, you know what I mean? Love. Like, he kind of played down, played. And, I, 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 look, I give you, everybody wants to be wanted. I'm just saying... They they want Kevin. All this stuff you're talking about is periphery. It's us in the media talking about it. It's not the Warriors. Believe me, the Warriors want Kevin Durant. He knows they want Kevin Durant. Well, Draymond the Green players earlier want this year Kevin Durant. against I That's think the Clippers Draymond here. Green. That's one player. They suspended him because he was such a jerk right. to Kevin Durant. That's my point. Huh? Isn't that showing you love? This guy's won three championships with us, but we're going to suspend him for something that really wasn't Suspendable. Well, we Shouldn't have suspended him for cuss going at a teammate one sentence. Going at a teammate. We don't need Two-time you. Two-time finals MVP is not a teammate. Best player in the NBA, not just a teammate. He's a teammate. Just like Steph is a teammate and so on and so I forth. I mean, come on. And yeah. I'm not saying it was right for Draymond. I'm just saying typically that's not a, something you suspend a player for. They did it. That's showing Kevin Durant yeah. the love. Steph, Steph, uh, Steve Kerr saying, I want him shooting 20, 30 times. Who doesn't want to hear that? Well, you, you reminded Who, what me. What basketball? You, you know, you don't think Michael Jordan would have loved to hear a coach say, I want him shooting 30 times? You Kobe reminded Bryant? me of Kobe Bryant in, in the Sun series, right? He had, what, well, 50 in a game? Well, that's the only reason I'm not completely shutting down your theory. I think Kevin Durant's better than that. I don't think Kevin Durant will pull a stunt like this, especially in the playoffs, like, oh, I'm not going to shoot the ball. Let's see what you can do without me. I think he's more of a winner than that. The only reason I won't shut it down is because Kobe Bryant did do that. Against Phoenix Game 7, we know years back, he, he was getting a lot of flack for shooting too much. And he decided not to shoot in the second half of that game, and it cost him. The difference is, Kobe Bryant did it for one half. Right. right. You're talking about Kevin Durant month. doing it for two months? Yes. Well, so you really think it, that? You made a great point with Kobe. People were calling him selfish, right? I think right. that was exactly what happened, and he took three shots in the second half. People are saying the Warriors don't need Kevin Durant. He ruined the NBA. I think there's Kevin Durant is showing them, you guys need me. I'm telling you right now, they're not beating the Rockets without Kevin Durant being MVP finals, well, not, Kevin Durant. Not if like, Kevin Durant's gonna be on the team and then and sabotages and not play. I mean, <laughs> I'm so, not going that far. But but that. the old Warriors, the old Warriors that Kevin Durant joined, that team was capable of beating the Rockets. But if it's gonna be thrown on us like blam, a lot like of out of the blue, and I'm still yeah. here, but I'm not gonna be myself. I'm gonna be a role player. No, they're yeah. not because it's gonna be jacked up. Yeah. I think Kevin Durant's better than that. But I'm look, I, it's a mystery. Why all of a sudden? Because Steph. Like, Kevin Durant tried to explain it like we're playing differently. They the are. last two months. It we, looked well, it. Well, he is. He said, we're playing differently. You know, the ball's more spread. He's the only one whose shots are down. Boogie shots weren't down. Steph and Clay shots weren't down. I don't know how to explain it. I mean, you got a theory. Again, I, yeah. think, I, like this. I think he's better than that. I'll quickly ask this. Do you believe right now the Warriors could be in some trouble against the Rockets in the next round? Yeah, I still favor the Warriors, but they're going to have their hands full. First of all, a lot of people are saying Houston's not better than they were last year. They look better. They're way better they right now. Better. They, they weren't the first better. half of the season. Utah they're is no team. slouch. They're they are dismantling Utah. <laughs> Utah. I mean, that is no to do this to Utah is no joke. So, yeah, they got a great chance yeah. to beat the Warriors. Now, I, I would say right now I'm probably 55-45 Golden State. I, but let's uh, – all right, let me quickly move on to the Rockets now. Um, maybe it's because they're killing the Jazz and it's unwatchable. I don't find joy watching the Houston Rockets because James Harden dribbles the ball 600 times a game. They run the exact same play ad nauseum. It just becomes boring. It's crossover, 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 drive, either floater or step back three or alley-oop to Capella every single time. And to me... That's a little boring. I like pace and space. I like watching the Warriors, and you're so stewing, you like, and you're gonna kill me right now. Who else do you like? Come watching? at me, bro. Other than the Warriors, who else you like watching? I like Kyrie Irving down the stretch. He is nice. 
Kyrie, Irving, Kyrie ain't handling it like he James does, Harden. But he's not dribbling 600 times a game. And if you 557. 553, I think. <laughs> I, I, um, I mean, look. I like Portland. Damian Lillard, man. he is. I, I'm having more fun watching Damian Lillard than I am the Houston Rockets. Damian Lillard look, is Lillard's going, going to another level. There's no doubt. He's unbelievable. I, You're not alone. A lot of people feel that wow. way about Harden. I, I love watching him. Hey, he's I'm a great saying, player. I'm he is. Saying, I'm not Incredibly saying I love watching him more than I liked watching, you know, uh, Michael Jordan or Steph Curry or something. But I love watching to because I understand how difficult it is to do what he's doing. For you to come down time after time after time, they know what's coming, and <laughs> shake a dude up with your handle. You're not the most, the fastest guy no. in the world, but you're somehow able to get around him or create space. The step back three, his three point shot is so pure, it's incredible. Right. Like I, I like watching it. Like it's not the most artistic thing. It might be the difference between watching Muhammad Ali in his prime and say. Uh, I don't want to say Mike Tyson because it's always fun to see somebody knock somebody out. But <laughs> it's just not as artistic. Yeah. But I understand how difficult it is to do what he's doing, and I'm in yeah. awe. I don't want to act like awe. I'm poo-pooing what James Harden's doing because he's incredible. He, I had Giannis as the MVP. Harden is looking like the Giannis. MVP. I think Giannis uh, is going to get it. And, and guarding him is difficult. But just from my point of view watching it, it's just it's gotten a little tiresome. And, and I'm a little nervous that if the Warriors get extinguished, we're seeing colossal ratings drops already. No LeBron in the postseason. Right. If the Warriors get knocked out in the second round, I, I, I don't think like every night out here in L.A., 6 o'clock, I'm like, I got to get home, watch the NBA f- uh, Finals, Conference Finals, Rockets, uh, Blazers. That, I just don't know. And I'm a well, huge I, NBA look, guy. I'll give you this. For the casual fans such as yourself, yeah. The, 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 not the real is fan, off the charts. For the casual fans, I do think there'll be a drop. Because I'm enjoying the playoffs now without LeBron. Obviously, I love to see him in it, but I'm enjoying it just as much yeah. as I would if he were in it. But the obviously, the casual fan yeah. is not. Uh, one, and I think it'd be the same thing if the Warriors are gone. I do think there'd be that same thing. But I think it'd be great for the NBA and the hardcore fans because – there would be an air of mystery. We wouldn't know would it be a Milwaukee, Boston, Toronto, Houston, maybe, like you said, some, from the other side of the bracket, San Antonio. I mean, it, But you be know what's going to be a bigger story than Rockets, Blazers, game one? Oh, Kevin Durant just unfollowed Curry on Instagram. Like, that's going to be the story. I'm not even making that up. It's going to be all, where's Kevin Durant going? Because he ain't staying if they don't win. One last quick note. Well, Does any so team sure? in the NBA whine as much as the Houston Rockets? Dude, it is un. Bearable. I mean, if because they expect to call every single time. If Harden misses a shot, he's like, "Where's the foul?" Doesn't go Chris Paul. Doesn't where's go the State. Home State wines a little bit, but they nothing w- like a the little bit. PJ Tucker, Kevin Durant, Austin and, Dr- and Draymond Austin Green. Rivers wants Michael Jordan whistles. I mean, that's what's happening out here. It's stop, insufferable. Stop ripping the Rockets. Right. Sorry, guys. Kill me in the that's YouTube way comments. Off. Uh, all he right. He loves when you kill him. Let's wrap up here. Goat Sard McIntyre, uh, Milwaukee Bucks, Boston Celtics, second round. Who you got? Milwaukee in six. Woo. Look. Eric Bledsoe locking down Kyrie? Not locking him down, but making it tough Can't lock him. down Kyrie. Eric Bledsoe was on my first team all defense. You can't, nobody can lock down Kyrie, but he will make it tough on him. Here's the deal. Because people look, inevitably, they're going to look back and say, Boston beat Milwaukee in seven last year yep. without Kyrie. Without Kyrie. That's probably where you Tatum were Tatum was a rookie. That's I ain't a, going there. That's, that's, you don't know where I'm going. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's true. I never know where you're going. That look, last year the Celtics in Milwaukee was nowhere near as good as they are. We know that, right? And Brad Stevens, despite not having Kyrie, had a humongous coaching advantage over the interim coach in Milwaukee. All right, huge. so so that that was huge. And then in the second round against Philadelphia, he had a humongous coaching advantage over Brett Brown. This season, this series against Indiana, which Boston isn't looking all that great. They do not look phenomenal. They have a talent advantage because Kyrie is there and Victor Oladipo for the Pacers is not. There's no advantage against yeah. Milwaukee. Talent-wise, I'd say it's a wash. Both teams are close, but I take Giannis as the better player over Kyrie, even though I think Kyrie is more clutch. And then the coaches, it's a wash. Brad, Mike Budenholzer is, the, is a great coach. Mike Budenholzer, Brad Stevens is a wash? Yes. No Where question. are you doing your wash? 
So like 25 cent laundry, get out of here. Who? Stop. Brad Who? Stevens went to the finals game seven last year in the East without Kyrie Irving. Could have took down LeBron. Are you kidding Mike me? Mike Boo knows. Can it. he win a big time playoff series first? Just give me one. One. Has, this what, what big time playoff series has Brad Stevens won? Uh, he went to the Eastern Conference Finals last year. What big? Mike Budenholzer took Kyle Korver, Damari Carroll, Al Horford, teams and Jeff so Teague to the Eastern Conference and Finals. They got swept. I by know, LeBron. but they dusted he out. He didn't. He didn't have the talent that Boston had, and he won. You just said they had four All Stars. He won. He didn't have talent. He won, sorry. Stop. Look, stop. Me, stop. He won sixty games. All right, sixty games. With a bunch of role players. Got to the conference finals. You said winning a big series. For that Atlanta team with that roster, those were big series wins. He took a team that had the 16th best record last year in the league, now has the first best record. He took a team that couldn't shoot threes last year. Now they make more threes than anybody. He took a team that couldn't defend last year. Now they were the only team in the top five defensively and offensively. What in the world? Brad (laughs) Stevens has had a bad year, dude. He has. uh, It's a bad year, no doubt. And, but, but you body laugh, of work, but you body laugh. Of work matters. What body of and work? And actually, we need to go back to Jason Kidd, who was what, awful. What last body year. of work? Brad Steve, I don't know. Should we go back he's to been the, he's when co- he took a bunch of kids from the Midwest? No, we should not because final. we don't care about college. This is the oh, NBA. Coaching, baby. coaching doesn't matter. This Just is the, the NBA. NBA. Okay. All right. Take that one to the YouTube comments. I gave him a blue chip dude in Kyrie, and the whole season was a mess. Well, I, you, you're blaming that on Brad Steve? Yeah. Oh. I'm blaming it on Brassy. You wow. want to blame it on Kyrie Irving? Well, Kyrie Irving blamed it on the other players. He didn't blame Brad Stevens. I'm well. Brad Stevens isn't that confrontational, and he needs to be mm. more confrontational. I didn't think Buck Celtics would be this heated. Now I do a coming up winners gambling podcast myself and Andrew Lynch. We like the Bucks and Celtics as great value to win the East. If they show up here. And the Milwaukee Bucks get their butts kicked by Boston, which very well could happen. No, it couldn't happen. Because the Bucks are favored. You they don't think it could happen? Oh, kicked. because they're dusting Detroit and just destroying the Detroit Pistons, who look like a G well, League what's team. What's Indiana look like? Indiana finished the season eight and fourteen. Doesn't they were still a good team? Eight and fourteen is a good team. I mean, uh, they without struggled. Your best they player? lived to the finish, but they still got there without Oladipo. Without Oladipo, they're not much better than, Listen, than Detroit. L- Detroit loses Blake Griffin, and they lose the first two games by 3,000 points, okay? Let's right, not compare right. Indiana to Detroit. I think, actually, the Bucks are overvalued here because of what's happening against Thon Maker uh, and the Detroit Pistons. Like, come on, dude. They're, they're running plays for Thon Maker. Like, come on. It's a little bit much. I don't even know where you're going. What, okay. are, you, what are you talking Celtics. about? Celtics. <laughs> Celtics. Celtics in six. You're going Bucks in? Six. You're wrong. All right. Uh, is that it? You, you, uh, this right? is so much fun, folks. I know you're happy we're back. He's a glutton Chris for Buzzard, I, I'm like Rocky in Rocky Four against the, He's the Russian. I'm Rocky. You know who wins that battle. You like that wing? I'm just going to let you go ahead because <laughs> nobody believes you. Nobody watching believes you. Okay. Go what ahead, part? The Kevin more. Durant, the say Bucks some Celtics. More. You're, you're, you're who? Can we you're talk? Who can we talk Orlando, Toronto? Do we have time for Orlando, Toronto? <laughs> All right. Signing off. Knockdown, Jay. Now, Stephen Jackson is with Nick and Cece to break down Ben Simmons' clutch performance in Game Three. All right, Stephen. How was he able to do it? How did Ben Simmons dominate last night? By not having a beat out there. I mean, the, it the, helped. The court is wide open. I want to see him do that with Embiid out there. It was good for it was good for Game Three for him to go out there and be dominant on the road because playing on the road, everybody can't do it. Only the mm. best players can mm-hmm. play like that on the road, and he showed he's one of those players that can dominate on the road. But going forward, we know that's not the team that's going to be out there. Embiid is going to be on that court, and the paint is not going to be as wide open. Okay, and that's a lot of reason why he was he got a lot of those layups because they had more shooters out there, smaller guards. So and he played a bigger position that whole game. If you look at it, Jimmy really ran the offense a lot that game last night. Jimmy really initiated a lot of the offense and Ben kind of played off the off the ball a little bit. But at the same time, not having to beat out there gave him the room to be more aggressive on offense, gave the lane, uh, gave him room in the lane to, to, to do those things and drive and stuff like that, only because Embiid was out there. But going forward, for this team to be the team that we all expect, for them to be a championship team, that he has to do that with Embiid on the court. So here's the thing, because I agree with you on Jimmy Butler did initiate a lot of the offense. Hell, Tobias Harris was, sorry about that, yes. Tobias Harris was bringing the ball up the court sometime. But it's not like they were playing no center. Right. Boban played 24 minutes. Greg Monroe played Boban 18. Boban played well, too. Totally in unproductive minutes on Monroe's side. Boban was excellent. So that's 42 minutes 
of the 48 in the game with a big man on the court, and Simmons still went out and did this. I, To me, maybe there was a little more spacing, but it was more impressive because Embiid wasn't out there because they needed it more. Mm -hmm. Because he was, he had to play great in a game. They didn't have to win like game two, but they needed. And now he has followed up what was one of his worst playoff games ever with, in back-to-back -back games, his two best playoff games mm -hmm. ever. He was spectacular in game two. We're playing really only three quarters because it's all they needed. And he was even better in game three. And to Dudley's comment about not being great in the half court, we talked yesterday about how he's a great half court defender, and he showed that yesterday. But on the offensive end, he was 11 of 13, 9 of 11 in the half court, only two transition buckets. Like, there's not a lot of room in my mind to criticize Ben Simmons after the game he had last night. No, when you're criticizing Ben Simmons, though, the criticism is real. He's not a shooter of the basketball. We are in the golden age of shooting the basketball. So for me, <clears throat> can a player be great? Be one of the top 25 players in the NBA and not be a shooter of the basketball and not be a seven-footer. It's going to be hard. Mm -hmm. It's going to be awful hard. But also, when you critique players, it's not sometimes on what they're doing. It's what is their potential. If, some, if, I, if I had a 6'9 point guard and I compared him to Magic Johnson and LeBron James, would I allow him not to be able to shoot outside of five feet and not criticize him? So the criticism of Ben Simmons is justified. Now, he's the one going to have to be able to solve that. But last night, you're missing something if you didn't think that he wasn't sensational. And I believe that Joel Embiid not being a part of the team and being a late scratch, it helped for a variety of reasons. So, yes, they did have a center on the court. But you didn't have to give him the basketball right. all the time. Exactly right. And Joel Embiid does take up a lot of space. Their philosophy, Nick, has been we're going through Joel Embiid for three quarters and then Jimmy Butler going to close them out. Exactly. But you don't have that. So initially, when you go to Ben, you have a different game plan. So, yes, we got a center on the court, but our game plan and how we're going to initiate the offense is going to be totally different, just like Kevin Durant. Those boogie shots, they were not there. So KD and through Kerr, they, they initiated the offense and they helped him out. That's what you saw. Ben Simmons has to keep that same aggressive approach. And if I was him, I wouldn't shoot outside of five feet. So my complaint with Ben Simmons is now don't have players force you to try to be something that you're not ready for. You're going to be an outside shooter at some point, but it's not going to be in this postseason. So don't settle for 10-footers, 8-footers. You have the ability to be able to get all the way to the cup, and that's what he was able to do last night. How much did it help Ben Simmons that J.J. Redick and Tobias Harris were hitting threes? Well, the pace, the pace of the game helped him out a lot, too, because he can continue to push them. When he don't have a shot, he has those guys that are knocking down shots, and he was confident in passing the ball. J.J. Redick hasn't been playing well, but he's one of those guys that you know on the road, he going to knock some shots down. And that's a guy, like unlike Kyle Carver, I love Kyle Carver, but J.J. Riddick, he'll hit those big shots in, in those games in the fourth quarter, and that's the type of guy you need. Tobias Harris was outstanding. I mean, he was really, really great. He was 6 of 6 from 3. He was the second best player on the court last night. Ben, to, it is, to me, so much more impressive that when all, okay, so our best player's out, we now need you to do more. Oh, no question. We now, you are going to have to eat up more possessions. He stepped it's, up. And he stepped up huge. He was, again, back-to-back -back games. The first one was a must-win. This one was a damn near must-win. Ben Simmons has the two best playoff games of his career. Back-to-back -back games, he's the best player on the court. And, Chris, I totally agree with you. If you're going to be a top 25 player and you can't shoot, you must have to be great at everything else. Right. Yeah. That's what he is. And right. it's not only just a fundamental problem. Oh, Last night, dude shot more shots right-handed than he did left-handed. Exactly. And I watched the warm-up, man. There ain't no routine. There ain't no, I'm going to shoot certain shots from this position. Man, he was shooting like right-handed hooks. I was like, why is he shooting that shot from eight feet on the right baseline? He's not going to shoot that during the game. So, yes, he was outstanding. But the way that you improve your game is you need some type of routine to help him, to make that defense come out to him. Just imagine. Okay, I'm just going to imagine this. It's Good Friday. Man, Jesus Resurrection Sunday. What if he could shoot from 10 feet? 
Would that be a crime? <laughs> so am I wrong sitting here saying one of the most talented guys we've had drafted in the NBA in the last several years, man, I wish he could shoot. He's a point guard, and I wish he could shoot from 10 feet. So I'm wrong in doing it's that. Not- but that. That's the old saying. That's why they say you practice game shots. You practice the way you play. You, you don't warm up and take shots that you won't take in the game. He has to start practicing those shots and take them as game shots, simulate them as game shots. So when he, play, when he gets those shots in the game, he's used to taking them and he's confident. But his confidence is the biggest thing that, that he's well, lacking. Well, right. I didn't, listen, I wasn't at the game. I didn't see him warm up. I do know in the game he did hit two right-handed hook shots. I also uh, no, it, go, go okay. ahead. No, no, I didn't. I, I mean, we just we just uh, saw from it. three feet. He was practicing from eight feet. I just didn't make that up. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. Well, the the I mean the, the hook shot we just saw was from I th- I'd say six or seven feet. But regardless, we don't have to get in the weeds on it. What is? The, but but again, we're in the same place. The guy's coming off his best career game. We're talking about the things he can't do. They, if we took everyone in his draft class and the class after him, because we don't really know how to classify him, redrafted him, you know who would go first overall? Ben Simmons. Not Tatum, not De'Aaron Fox, not Pascal Siakam. Of those two draft classes, the only one to be an all-star, yep. Ben Simmons. One rookie of the year, Ben Simmons. But as long as we have that TV sh- right there, and as long as we criticize LeBron James, as long as we criticize Steph Curry, as long as we criticize Harden, as long as we criticize Russell. we don't Russ, do it after their and, great games. Tatum yes, has do. one more, though. Tatum has got a better winning percentage. Right. Yeah, of course. Fair enough. But we don't do it after their great games. Right. We don't talk about the things they, they can't do. They kill LeBron. Do. They kill LeBron. When he misses a free throw, they kill him. Okay, so are we, we're now holding Ben Simmons to LeBron standard. I'm not comfortable with that. I don't think. I don't think anyone. No, should be. no, no, no. But if 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 you're gonna criticize LeBron for He's missing free throws, you two. have to. But you have to criticize any NBA player that can't shoot. Not just Ben Simmons. Okay. Anybody that has an NBA contract, talk, listen to me. If you have an NBA contract right now in the NBA and you can't shoot, go back to the drawing board or give up your contract. Because there's no way you should be in the National Basketball Association making millions of dollars, can't shoot a free throw, or can't shoot a jump shot. I'm sorry. No respect there. Thank you for listening to the Hoops on Fox podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a five-star review letting us know what you think of the show.